Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Project Babylon, Project Babylon GM prep using the Pathfinder system. I think tonight we're going to talk some more about incorporating the Stars Without Numbers rule set into helping build this world. So while Pathfinder, I think, is a great combat system, an ultimate campaign is great at helping build a world. It just doesn't have everything that I'm looking for. Now, <clears throat> one announcement. I have named the world finally. I think that the planet that this takes place on is going to be called Kiramak. And uh, we need to name some of these towns. So we're going to probably do it in reverse order. We're going to figure out what the town began as. And uh, work from there, and then we'll probably come up with a town name. So, what culture do we want to base Mage Town off of? I'm thinking French Cajun because we're going super hard on the uh, on that. And also, for most of these so societies here. A lot of them are going to be predetermined because of things we've already figured out. Some of them may not be. <clears throat> so, what was the reason for this particular town to come into existence? Mage Town. Reason 8. And again, we might have to do some stuff. Invasion Force. They never wanted to live on this world. They were just unfortunate here to be stuck when the scream. So this is interesting about the scream because I had a similar thought of what to do with this world. So I keep coming back to dreading every time the players reach the edge of this hex map, having to develop a whole new hex map. And my thought around that is the world has literally been shattered into roughly equal sized floating parcels of land so the planet is just an orb of water and above that are these floating super cities basically like their own individual really large islands or really small continents and they're all like over the horizon so you can't see the, the closest ones to you or at least from this particular one you can't see the others and without some form of flight or magical transit, and with the words of power system, you know, there's no dimension door or teleport. You, you have to build the spell up. And even then, you will probably want to know where you're going. Um, actual physical flight is really the only way that they're going to get anywhere. And, uh, you know... The other thought I had is that the world will currently be the only race available for character creation will be human. Because only humans currently live here. So this works out great. This was... So the Mages Academy here was founded... The... Um, I'm thinking like a magical uh, like crusade was started to deal with something before the shattering. Pre-shattering. And when the shatter happened, they were stuck in this town in the middle of nowhere. And they were basically like, well, it's time to merge with the government, taking this place over. So they were originally an invasion force. Oh, that might not be the right place to put it. Yeah, it's the colonization. So they're originally an invasion force. Their culture is... French Cajun. The original society. Now we know where they're going to end up. They're going to end up in a technocracy because they control the government. <clears throat> so we need to pick something that evolves into technocracy. Corporatism. Society divided between interest groups and factions. I think that works out. <clears throat> so it was originally a corpore corporatism. And it's currently a technocracy. And of course, in this case, technology 
in fact means magic. <clears throat> now, this corporatism is represented by the fact that when they formed the original government, they were individually different units of this military. You know, they were the cleric unit, the druid unit, the sorcerer unit, the um, wizard unit. But now, they kind of have to work together because they're, they're it. They're like, they were the whole leadership of the army that was left. You know, there were some non-magical soldier units with them that they basically had to take care of. Um, in this new crazy land where monsters crawl out from beneath the earth and everyone you know lives on an entirely different continent that you're never going to see again. <clears throat> so there's that, you know. There's that. What are their traits? Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> I think, no, rational, I mean, they are rational, but they do have magical powers, so, I think they're rational in-universe, you know, they don't, well, no, again, they are led by a group of clerics, so that's hard. Hmm. I think Harmonious will work out. Yeah, Harmonious works out because we already know that they attempt to harvest off of the Sorcerer Faction, the Order of the Dragon Slayers. So they are harmonious. All of their conflicts are settled, like Knife in the Dark. Uh, a plant of creeping poison delivered to someone that looks like a beautiful flower, but in fact is a, a, an assassin vine or something. Their conflict is a D10 plus a D8. So let's see what the current conflict in the city is. 23. Freedom. Oh, I gotta roll 3d8. Let's roll two more d8. 362. The government claims the right to restrict travel and so social associations. Interesting. I could, I can see that. I think you guys can probably see that too. You know, they control literally everything about the lives of everyone in Magetown. So why wouldn't they, you know, tell people what to do? 362, so the other two are... Agitators paid by the ruling class paint freedom as an invitation to chaos. Uh, so the ruling class is mages, so maybe it's really, like... I don't want to say wizards are inherently lawful, but they are inherently ordered because of their structure. And this also plays into the way that they look down or harvest from the sorcerers. Druids, while not inherently about order, are about balance rather than chaos. And so I think these clerics are probably clerics of a lawful god. And between, you know, it's lawful, lawful, neutral or it's lawful ordered balanced and chaotic and in that sense the sorcerers are the losers the chaos faction is really being outstripped by the neutral and lawful factions so i can see this happening and in two discussion of the conflict is forbidden in decent society so people don't talk about how the sorcerers are being downtrodden upon they don't talk about the fact I like that. I like it a lot. You know, it's like, I can't believe you would bring that up at this party. Don't you have better sense than that? We don't... Get out. Just get out. We don't... Mm -mm. Uncouth. All right. So we know something pretty interesting about the world now. This is not working. I want to, if you guys know how to do this, let me know. I want to split it so that it's not all. Now, I want to, like, ah. All right, let's try this. No, it's not working. I'm trying to get it to go down in a column. But 
that's not ha happening quite how I want it to now. Nope, that didn't work either. All right. There we go. So we know now that the, uh, they're kind of snotty. Oh, hey, what's up, James? You ready for, um, next Thursday? Not this Thursday. Next Thursday, however, those of us in the know and watching at the current time know that Mummy's Mask will be starting. And I think we have another A-plus crew lined up for that. And, as usual, I have a new mechanic to add to the campaign's house rules. He said, smugly, hoping he's looking directly in the camera, looking extra smug. <clears throat> I think that fills up everything. So now we need a, an official name for the government. I'm going to leave that blank. I'm hoping someone in the audience or someone in the YouTube comment section will come up with that. But we need a better name than Magetown because Magetown is fucking stupid. <clears throat> uh, well, we know there's a tower on a cliff. We could just call it Clifton. I think I'm going to use Don John. I'm just going to go ahead and use my uh, Don John street cred right here. <clears throat> Medieval demographics calculator. So we need the Pathfinder settlement data. Because we need to make this town a certain size in order to balance it. So we need it to be a small town. Um... has 1950 people. That yeah, sounds right. Kind of small. So most of, I like this, atheists. I like this name. Okay, so we're just gonna copy all this stuff. is now known as Atheus. Let's see if we can, uh-oh. That's a problem. Well, I don't need to refer back to that very often. And when I do, I can just look closely at it. Where's the magic shop owners? Maybe there's some way I can make a screenshot of it. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working very well. All right. <clears throat> how big is 32 acres? I confess, I don't actually know how big an acre is. Square meters, no, I need... Um, Square feet. Okay, that's pretty sizable. <clears throat> Ooh, square miles, that's even better. That's super small. Yeah, that's really small. Well, okay, so we know it's all about hunting down crocodile. This this mage town, ath atheist. So I think the population's probably not centralized in that area the government reaches out into the nearby area um you know people come come to atheists for magical healing for magical assistance to get wands of light and prestidigitation to get documents read and written that kind of stuff but most people live in little small villages and and thorps and hamlets you know so they 
<clears throat> the industry in Atheist isn't that well developed. It's not super well developed, but what in how do I say this? They're they're pulling in from all around. So they they have the lumber yards bringing stuff in. You know, they've got the mines bringing stuff in. They're not a they're they're a processing area. They're second stage in the chain of material flow. So while they may not have that many places of work, those that do are like super huge. I hope that makes sense. And it's like everything around it, it's 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 like there's a suburbs around it. All these little tiny thorps. Like people will walk five, ten miles to come to work in the morning, you know, and and just stay in the town like in inns and stuff. So there's nineteen fifty regular residents there. I think I think that works out in my fictional mind. I'll roll with that. Okay, on to the next area, Clockwork Town. I'm going to call this the Tower. No, the Tower is the name of the mage thing. Yeah, but they, they rule it, so I'm just going to call this the Tower for now. No, that's too Dragon Agey. Ah, I don't want to call it the Circle either, because that's just... That's straight out of... Um, I want to call it Ranville, but that's not what it's called. Wheel of Time. I had everything about the Women's Circle. All right, we'll come up with something. <clears throat> Let's do a talk Clockwork Town. All right, so we know Clockwork Town used to be like a democracy or a republic or something. And now it's a military dictatorship. So we know that it's a military dictatorship. <clears throat> its people are repressed. So is there some sort of freedom, free place? Let's say Republic. Let's see if there's something like that. Yeah, okay. So it was a Republic originally. And the reason for colonization is almost certainly going to be its vast natural resources. Let's see if that's a thing. Excavation site sounds interesting. Rich natural resources. Boom. Nailed it. Almost word for word, too. What is their culture? Hmm. And they list a bunch of cultures somewhere in the back of this thing. I want to say something like, I don't want to say anything. I just want to look for the cultural creation. Nope, that's corporate, not culture. And Russian, Spanish, Nigerian. Hmm. I'm really liking Russian right now. I'm feeling it. So these are people that live in the mountain. They're, they're simple folk that mine, make cotton, get rice. They live hard lives. They drink good alcohol, rice wine. And uh, they form an enlightened government, a republic, where you know people vote for local senatorials. And uh, in the end, one of those senators ended up becoming the rubber baron so he became like first among equals in the senate and then just like palpatine he was like ah oh, shucks don't worry al i know i need to take these wartime powers but ever since that shattering you know huh, you need somebody to take a firm rein on the government and make sure no one takes over and so that was like 40 years ago he's still in control All right, so let's see what trait the people have here. I gotta get back up to societies. Nope, that's Hydra Sector. Boom. You know, the more I go through this thing, the more I re really, really want to run Stars Without Numbers. And more than that, more than running a Stars Without Numbers campaign, I want to run 
Skyward Steel, which is an expansion book for Stars Without Numbers, where the players are members of a military vessel. So it goes to the rules of like how players would level up through becoming officers or uh, higher ranking like Master Petty Chief or something like that. And, and it keeps it interesting. You know, you don't just go into Starship Combat. Starship Combat in Stars Without Numbers is really fast. You like roll D20 and you, you use a weapon. Boom, boom, boom. Somebody dies. You know, it's even faster than Pathfinder because it's just two people that wail on each other and basically, the first person to, to tag somebody else wins instantly by murdering the other dude. So, Skyward Steel kind of switches that up. You know, you've got the got to scan incoming ships for cargo, smuggling, that kind of stuff. I just, I really would like to see something like that. And of course, I've got to find the time to run it and people who are willing to play it and people who are willing to watch it. But... If you think you might enjoy something like that, leave a message in the comment section below. So, societal trait resigned. Resigned just leaps out at me. Yeah. They are resigned. They they've been they gave this guy power. He's got the power. He's never going to give it up. Uh for almost 40 years now since the shattering, he's pretty much beat them into complete subservience. No air on the horizon. I think, yeah, that'll be a great adventure seed. Like, he doesn't have an air, And so, like, his mercenary lieutenants are vying for who's going to take over when he dies. Wow. Oh, man, so good. I, I just really love setting up this world. All right. Let's figure out the conflicts. <clears throat> what is the conflict on this particular world? I think inequality is almost certainly going to be it. Right? Because there's haves and there's have-nots. One group controls the bulk of wealth or political power. Yeah, that pretty much defines this place. So we're going to do 3d8. 844. Okay. Oh, only certain groups or casts are allowed to gain information. All right. Four. An outside power threatens to intervene if oppression grows too great. And that would be the nobles of Noble Town, who will probably rename to something less fucking stupid. The oppressed share their own language and form of dress. So good. <clears throat> so. Uh, I think that makes sense in the fiction as well. You know, there's the difference between the peasantry and the mercenaries. And <clears throat> and the, I'm guessing, almost certainly, there has to be a resistance movement. Gotta be a resistance movement. And so these people over the last 40 years have been developing, like, Thieves' Cant or something like it. And it's spread throughout this the, the cities on this, I'm gonna call it Tile, on this piece of the Shattered World. Oh, I, I mean, it's not really Thieves' Cant, though. It's just, it's going to become Thieves' Cant. How to say this? So it's not a language only for thieves, but thieves have taken it up because it's such a useful shorthand battle language. And it's like you're saying one thing, but you mean another. But what to name this town? All right, so this place is pretty sizable. This is a large town, so I'm going to say it has 3,500 people. Uh, we'll reload, and then we'll do the 3,500 people. Jornindaller. I'm going to alter that. It's going to have zero noble houses. Oh, no, because they have counselors. <clears throat> so, they are now called Jornindaller. Now, the question is, do I want to claim that the rightful government is the mercenaries, or... I mean, he does keep control through the town council. 
So he is technically a member of the Jornidollar Senatorial Chamber. And that is the name of their government, is the Senate. What the F? All right, I need to undo that. And manually. Oh, it's doing down here. That's what it was. Okay. Makes sense. I've only included Zathras as a formality. So, here, here's my idea about Zathras. It's a small farming area. 435 people live there. And it's in the close it's on the mountain as close to the middle of the tile as possible and so these are people that after the shattering decided they didn't want to live towards the edge of these tiles so inside each of these tiles um because they're floating between several hundred and several thousand feet above the water level of this new water world there's like a magic generation of heat there's magic generation of water so like springs in the mountains feed all the rivers and then as the water reaches these like lake marshes at the sides of the world it falls off you know you just have this gigantic waterfall off the side it's some epic looking avatar type ship wow really yeah avatar is like perfect for inspiration for this how did i not think of that before so anyway they have their own sources of internalized water, warmth, air, and that kind of stuff. The soil replenishes itself. It's all part of the magic of the shattering. And exactly what that is, I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure... I am certain I will figure it out eventually. So, the town of Zathras is this, like people who want to shut themselves away from the world. They didn't want anything to do with the wars they did, that happened before the Shattering. They don't want anything to do with the wars after the Shattering. They just want to live in peace. And so they live on top of the highest mountain. So just in case anything happens at the edges, they start crumbling. Everything starts tilting. They'll be nice and safe for as long as possible. <clears throat> so that's why they're there. All right. Moving on, we have the secret people of Undertown. Uh, I gotta come up with a name. Hmm. So let's see here. Uh, cloak what? Mantle manner. I like that. The cloaked men in German. Sorry, I was doing some uh, German translation. So, mantle manner. All right. <clears throat> What are they ruled by? Well, you know what? We will go through, and they're going to be all rolled out. We don't know that much about them at all. But they are the cloaked men. Why were they here? They... It was a refueling outpost. Now, what does that mean exactly? The fringe, usually fuel. Okay, all right. I think we can make this war. Eh, no, it's so close to the capital city. I think we'll just reroll. Thank goodness I didn't roll a number fifteen. Twelve political liberty. Oh. I like that. They broke away from Nobletown. Mm, and we're driven underground for it. Alright. 
So they were originally seeking asylum or political refuge or something like that. They managed to get outside of the town. The shattering hit, and they all went underground. Their original government was... Feudalism. So a chain of oaths that held these people together. Oh, and they they're they gotta be Germanic, undoubtedly. <clears throat> and Noble Town's French. I mean it just makes perfect sense. <clears throat> you know, you got Russia on one side, you got Germany on the other. Where do you have in between there? Well, I guess, actually, you would have a number of places like Poland in between there. But I like the idea of Snute French nobles being the largest bastion of culture and society on this godforsaken tile of rock floating through the air. One day we will rise up and unite the world under the banner of noble town, and we will eat the grow cheese. <laughs> Oh, so if we run away from battles as quickly as possible. How many French stereotypes can I throw out at one time? Ah, oh, that was a terrible accent, by the way. I'm embarrassed by it. All right. Feudalism. So, what happened? After the shattering, the society of people bound by oaths evolved into an oligarchy. Let's figure out exactly what that's going to mean in game terms. Their definition of oligarchy might be slightly different than mine. Corporate, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Shared military or legal system. I like that. So while people all owe oaths to, let's say, different clans within the system, all of the clans cooperate. <clears throat> so I guess the clans would have evolved out of the original families that survived the shattering by hiding beneath the earth. And now all the clans, you know, they retain the old oath loyalty system, but they're all like, we're in this together. Fuck the surface world. We're going to murder them all. <clears throat> so they're cooperating. All right. It took me a little while to pull that one together, but we did it. We did it. Um, yeah, we'll roll out their specific trait. I don't think we've given them anything. Was it a D20? I hope it was a D20. It was, and their trait is honorable. Uh, so, I mean, that's probably the way their warriors operate. <clears throat> no, that doesn't work at all. They murder people in the night. Maybe they're only honorable to people that they respect. So while, like, so they're underground for 40 years and they're just now coming out and fighting. I think, if you were a fan of Mech Warrior, I think that they kind of fall into the clans. Or if you're a fan of Marco Polo, they fall into the um, the Mongolian way of things. So they're, they're constantly fighting among themselves for resources, for uh, mates, for political status. So, like, the government is stable, but the minor shifts are controlled. <clears throat> and by minor shifts, I mean... Kind of like the American democracy is stable. It's a two-party system. You don't really expect anything crazy to happen. But the day-to-day, -day, this person's governor, this person's whatever, changes through honorable military conflict. So, like, the champions of each house come forward and fight. That's it. Uh, let's figure out what their conflict is. Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be resentment. Got to be. They hate the surface world. And we roll 3D on the resentment chart.
883. Oh, this is resentment towards themselves. But we can alter this a little bit. So they despise a number, another. They're convinced that they should rule this land. Okay. Uh, yeah, so before they went underground, these honorable political refugees basically fought off an attack. So, like, the battle was probably ongoing when the shattering happened. Like, we have this army of, like, the the nobles probably paint them as, like, treasonous, feudalists. You know, they're honorable warriors. They don't really follow the noble culture of of uh, peasants and um, and lords. So, like, one is super high and one is super poor. There's, like, this chain of lower, lower class, lower middle class, middle, lower class, and just up and up as the feudalistic society goes up to, like, we'll call them chiefs, but they probably weren't called chiefs. They were probably just called, like, tribe leader or something. And this group, this ethnic or political group, is cast out. They're running from the city. The shattering happens, and they're like, get underground! Those that don't die. And so now, they're pissed. What do we have? 883. Okay. And the three is... They're willing to harm themselves so long as their rivals hurt worse. That is going to definitely paint the way that they approach the coming military conflict. So if you remember, all of their units are currently stealthed. And they are prepared to begin... They're going to launch saboteurs... And those saboteurs, while stealth, they're not attacking or defending. And so they can use their special action without revealing themselves and uh, strike at the fortress town and just completely overwhelm them without ever... So the fortress town won't be able to act. Or they won't be able to attack ever as long as the saboteurs are attached to them. Fantastic. So all they need to do now, the people of Mantle Manor, is uh, build up a small military force and kick some ass. All right, so the name of their government is going to be <clears throat> the Manor Tribal Council. Why is it not letting me type things? And you might notice Fortress Town is not on uh, this chart. That is because it is part of Noble Town. Uh, we need something Frenchy to call Noble Town. So let me get an English to French translator. <clears throat> oh, I like that. All right. I cannot pronounce this, but it's M-E-I-L-L. It means the best. <clears throat> Milieu, we are the best. <laughs> oh. And they're called the, the houses, because it's the noble houses of Milieu. Oh, yeah, we got to do this thing. Okay, so they probably have a pretty large society as well. They got about 1,500 people. Boom, we'll reload. The name of the Mannerheim City Council is Carninone. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's interesting. Kept that one in intact. Let's insert a row above and a row above just to keep each one. I gotta figure out how to do that again correctly. We'll see. <clears throat> uh -oh. Well, I've accidentally uh, detached my headset here, so let me just put that back on real quick. All right, cool. Should be working. 
course, if it's not, I'll have no idea that it isn't because I'll still be hearing hearing zero sound currently. So, <clears throat> yep. Yeah. My ear. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get them out. They need to be pretty big, so they're going to be about 17,000 people. They have the force. What they don't have is magic. And it is the town of Raybrook. No, they're the town of Ray. Ray. Millier. So this is Mantle Manor. And this is... Me, yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> we're gonna take and off. We're gonna say there's only eight noble houses, but they're big. They're not like other people's noble houses. These are like they have seven or eight minor noble houses attached to it. So, like, um, Game of Thrones, instead of just the Starks, you know, they had the Car Starks who ruled them loyalty and stuff like that. Like, they have split houses, but there's the eight major noble houses. that are part of the uh part of the city and they only have one priest so they have plenty of clergymen but they only have one magic guy everybody else gets the fuck out of there and goes to i'm gonna say mage town but it is in fact atheists all right what was the reason this place was founded let's find out <laughs> Thirteen. Precious export. Air minerals. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, all right. We got to figure out what that is. Let's look at the hex map. So those are the cotton fields they can't access. What does this place have? Oh, they have a mix of rare metals that you can't get anywhere else in these tile. So, yeah. They they have they have the rare metals. So I mean they have a stable supply of iron, but they're consuming such a huge amount of iron that they need the town of Atheus's iron just to keep things going. So yeah. <clears throat> Alright, watch me fall out of this chair again. It's gonna happen. Oh, oh I did it. I managed to sit back in the chair without falling. <clears throat> For those of you who follow the show, <laughs> I, uh, I've been falling out of this chair for the last week, this new fucking chair, which I hate. <clears throat> All right. We know that their current society, I don't want to say it's a monarchy, but that might be it. Because it's more of like a collective rule and I think monarchy is a single mm. I'm not feeling it mm. I'd almost say feudalism Um, play. 
This is hard. Ooh, I almost like tribalism for this. Yeah, we're going to go with it's currently tribalistic. <clears throat> and that's just my way of expressing that it's a council of noble houses. So it's not a republic. People don't vote these people in. It's not a monarchy because nobody's the king. There's no primary. <clears throat> and it's not an oligarchy because they're all constantly attempting to undermine each other. So we're just going to have to, in, in character, call it a tribalistic society. Technocracy, no. So what were they originally? Something tribalistic. Republic. Maybe can oligarchy lead to it? Bam. Okay. So it was originally an oligarchy. It, there was a formal council, and after the shattering, it dissolved. Got it. All right. Is there a trait called snooty? Mm, ambitious? Cosmopolitan? Oh. Fractious? We'll roll. We'll roll. Although I'm liking Fractious, but we'll roll it out. Hug it out, guys. Hug it out. Seven is Curious. Well, given the number of people around them that are all using secret units, that is an interesting choice. But there we go. They are Curious people. <clears throat> what is their struggle? So we roll 1d12 plus 3d8. 3, 8, 35. Um, okay. Their struggle is inequality. <clears throat> Let's roll that again because we already got an unequal government. And although it would make sense here. I'm trying to get some diversity up in this beer. Nine, a schism. Now that's interesting. Points of differences. Ignite brutal violence. I like that. Relics or evidence uncover that the world's majority faith is based on a hoax or a scheme. I like this. That would explain why they have almost no clergy, because the clerics will not do anything with these guys. And that's why no known people of faith live there. Uh, that's sex. Make painful sacrifices for my adherents. Eight thirty five. Oh, Okay, so these noble houses. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> the nobility believe that the world's major faith is some sort of hoax. They, uh, I guess they like burn clerics at the stake or something. Any b so it's like Rahadum from Pathfinder. Uh, it's a nation that if you're found using divine magic, um, they kill you. Or they uh, do terrible things. And uh, they, you like, if you make out with mages, they're like, nope, that's bad. All right, so these guys are super assholes. Interesting. All right, there are something else I was missing. No. Where is my other chart? Oh, right, it's the uh, the faction chart. I'm actually missing on the faction sheet each of these assets. We're, we got to switch this up. So they are, in fact, I like that. We'll call it the academy. <clears throat> the government is called the... Academy. All right. 
Their homeworld is Atheus A. And this is uh, Dorn and Dalar. The capital is called Milieu. Morlocks live in mental manner. And they still live wherever the hell they want because they're pirates. <clears throat> but I like the faction. I like the name of the academy, I think. I'm going to keep that one. <clears throat> this guy is going to be called... The Baron of Mercenaries. People of the land are going to be called Jorn and Dollar Resistance, which is most of them. Northeast Nobility become Milier Nobility. Fortress Cities, seeing as Fortress Cities, and these guys become Mental Manor. Uplanders are uplanders. <clears throat> oh, we can call them Scots Irish. Ooh, we can call them Picts. <laughs> ah, send in the Irish. Arrows are expensive. Send in the Irish. All right, there we go. Uh, and I need to make an asset. This asset is called. I think it's called Base of Operations. No, that's not what it's called, but we'll figure it out. Whoa. Yeah, apparently Nightbot doesn't like you typing in caps, bro. It just deleted all of your shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was just testing it out today, too, and apparently it just went nuts. Oh, while well, I'm here, I might as well grab this chart. So, this is how adventure seeds work, okay? An enemy robs a friend of some precious thing that's desired. Okay, so... <clears throat> where are the tags? Here's a faction tracker. Let's say they're an atheist. They're going up against the academy. Alright, the enemy robs the friend of some precious thing. Where is this? <laughs> okay, so the enemy is a corrupt mage, has robbed an aspiring student of some sort of prized research. Boom. There we go. Adventure seed in place. So, random encounter chart, we're going to throw in that. We're going to have to throw in a lot of stuff there. Uh-oh, this isn't working. There we go. Nah, we'll come back and just reference this when we need it. I don't feel like copy-pasting all this stuff. All right, so where was I? Factions, I need the base of operations. And that's still not the name of it. I keep saying that. It's actually called base of influence. There we go. So in order to purchase from things, you... So damage done to the base of influence is done to the faction hit points. So the starting faction bases all are equal to the faction's hit points. So 29, 29 is, I mean, it'll have, but you can set up extra bases to buy more stuff. So if you want to put units down in a certain area, you got to have a base of influence. Bad thing is, put down base of influence and it's undefended, well, they're going to attack it and it's going to be super easy to kill. 
And you're going to take hit point damage directly to your faction through that. So you got to get there, you got to defend the area you're going to, and then you got to throw up that base. Base of influence. All right. So, asset tracker. We need Uh-oh. Boom. Nailed it. That's still good. Robber Baron becomes Mercenary Baron. People of the land become the Jornan Dollar Resistance. And the Morlocks become Mental Manor. Right. So we need one for each. Okay, and this asset is base of influence. Boom. Oh. This is weird. Well, we're just going to have to manually go through here. And then Milieur has 49, so we're going to have to swap it. Um, that's not working, is it? Let's delete whatever is in these cells. Okay, 29, 15, 15. All right, we're going to do it manually. It's not just letting me get the numbers out. All right. Academy 29. Uh-oh. That'll work. There we go. <clears throat> Oops. No. I need to be on the faction sheet. I need to keep switching back here. Dragon Slayers. So we're looking at uh, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Everybody else is small. Okay, cool. So we're just going to put 15 here and then I drag it through. Boom. Okay. X's. Their army is probably split between 310 and 410. So three ten three ten four ten and four ten. <clears throat> they still got some more stuff. Wow, they have a ton of shit. Okay. <clears throat> That's uh this is the mercenaries, so or this is the noble stuff, so three ten and four ten. Keep their military nice and spread out. Informers, 310, and then another unit, 410. Okay. <clears throat> All of them are in... Uh, I think it's 4-5, right? 4-5. Uh, and they need to move him. <clears throat> what does he do again? I'm pretty sure they need to. He's like cunning, right? There we go. Demagogue. Yeah, so they need to get him to the noble city. They need to get him to Milieu to start doing damage. And since their units start out stealthed, he can sneak into the city as best as possible. 
So it's going to be a battle between the informers of uh, of the nobility versus the demagogue trying desperately to lower their cunning and destroy their shit. Okay. All right. So. Balances. Nine, ten. <clears throat> so the his units are located directly in the city. These guys are. Oops. This is nine ten. These guys have. Yeah, their industry is in the city, and they're probably going to want their producers in the city. <clears throat> These guys are located. <clears throat> at ten two ten. The seditionists are also going to be located in 210. They're going to start out in the square they need to be in, and these zealots start out at 110. The uplanders, now that's an interesting question. They're probably going to be spread out. So one unit of uplanders is at 2, 3, and another is at 1, 3. So I think that the strike force is closer. The smugglers... They're probably going to send the smugglers in first to do some information gathering. Follow it up with the strike fleet. Strike fleet is, of course, a light siege unit. They're the cavalry coming down to rob Atheus of its ill gotten gains. All right. Cool. That closes out the faction. We got adventure seeds ready to go. We got the society set up. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's going to call it a, a night for this. We'll probably restart the stream in the next five to ten minutes here with, uh, with something else. Mm, maybe some more shadow run. I'm feeling eh, maybe some rest here. Either way, it'll be restarting. Thank you guys for coming out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And uh, I like where this is going. I like this world of Kermak.